Good morning. Boalium Falcha Agasfeha, a Kuroiv Galer, Gaji or Law, Chunskliak, the Firul in you. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us this morning for our Falcha Ireland 2021 Virtual Industry Day. My name is Fiona Monaghan and I will be overseeing today's proceedings from my home in Galway on the Wild Atlantic Way. My colleagues tell me we have a record number of attendees tuning in this morning from across our four regional brand areas. For many of you, our annual industry day is an opportunity to come together, not only to hear from us in Falcha, Ireland, but to network with your colleagues and peers from across the industry. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait until next year for the networking. But I'm also conscious that many of you joining us today are attending your first Falcha Ireland industry event. And I hope the material today will be both insightful and beneficial to you and your business as we enter into another challenging year for tourism. The theme for our event this morning is Survive to Thrive. And all the material has been designed to help your business survive in the coming months and be well positioned to thrive once we can welcome back visitors again. For those of you taking to the Twitter and social media airwaves, we have a dedicated hashtag for today's event, Tourism Together. We will shortly hear from Minister Catherine Martin, who will deliver our keynote address. It is good to have Minister Martin joining us to share the government and political perspective on where we are currently at. Following Minister Martin, we will be joined by our own CEO, Paul Kelly. Paul is joining us from Dublin and he has been totally immersed and centrally involved in the government's tourism response to COVID-19 since last March and has been working tirelessly on behalf of the sector. Paul will take a few moments to look back on 2020 and the supports that Falch had delivered and developed during the year. Taking the learnings from the last 10 months, Paul will give us his considered view, insofar as anyone can, on how this year is likely to unfold and we'll share with you our plans to support you over the coming year and time ahead as we start to welcome back tourism. Next, we will head to Cork, where our Director of Sector Development, Jenny DeSauls, will share with us the contents of the Falcha Ireland Toolbox of Supports, and in particular, our business continuity schemes. Following on from Jenny, we will hear from our Director of Marketing, Niall Tracy, in Sligo. Niall has some very interesting consumer insights to share, and he will reveal details of our extensive domestic marketing campaigns to stimulate demand for short breaks once the current government restrictions are eased. Our final speaker this morning, our Director of Regional Development, Paul Keeley, joins us from Newbridge. Paul will remind you about how the Falcha Ireland team will continue to engage and collaborate with you. Paul, in his presentation, will focus on how to optimise the domestic tourism market this summer and also share with you plans for our outdoor dining and urban animation initiatives. Once we have heard from all our speakers, we will have a questions and answers session with our panel. Now, don't leave it until the last minute to pose your questions. My collleagues are standing by all morning to collate the questions as they come in and we'll do our best to get through as many of them as possible. So to formally get our proceedings underway this morning, I would like to introduce the Interim Chairman of the Falcha Ireland Authority, Paul Carty. Paul is joining us this morning from Kinsale. Good morning, Paul. Good morning to you all. A very warm welcome to this Falcha Ireland virtual conference where the theme of survive to thrive is very apt. As someone that has worked in the tourism industry for over 40 years now, latterly as Managing Director of the Guinness Storehouse and represented the attraction sector as Chairman of Avia and past Chair of ITIC, the Irish Tourism Industry Confederation, I understand the many and complex struggles you have been facing over the last year as each of you has tried to navigate the crisis that COVID-19 has thrust upon us. I have met with many business owners and colleagues working in our industry over the last number of months and heard their stories and the struggles they are facing. No one struggle is the same, but protecting their businesses, the livelihoods of their colleagues and ensuring there are wonderful experiences open for when trading can return to some type of normality is a common thread and priority 
that unites everybody that I've spoken to. Today I address you in a different role as Interim Chair of Fall to Ireland, a role I've been privileged to hold for the last six months, where I've been able to use my experience within the tourism and hospitality sector to support and guide Fall to Ireland's rapid response to COVID-19 over the last year. Indeed, I have served on Fall to Ireland's authority for many years and can attest to the commitment and motivation of the organisation to ensure as many businesses and as many jobs as possible survive in our sector. Throughout my years in tourism, I know that we as a sector have faced many challenges, perhaps none so devastating as the one we face today. However, I also know that we are a resilient sector, one that will recover and bounce back stronger than ever once this storm passes. I know that term resilience is probably overused for our industry, but it is nevertheless our hallmark and signature strength. So while the road ahead seems dark, there is light further ahead and Fulcher Ireland will be there to support you as we find our way out of this current crisis. Let me assure you, as we face into 2021, Fulcher Ireland's focus is clear to support you to survive through 2021 and make sure there are customers waiting at your doors when the time to open comes. I am delighted to welcome you all here today to hear more about how the National Tourism Development Authority plans to do this over the next number of months. I hope you find value and comfort in the plans you hear today, knowing that our commitment in Fulcher Ireland remains steadfast and the drive to help you survive in the short term and thrive in the long term exists across the entire organisation. I'd now like to hand over to our next speaker to deliver the keynote address. Minister for Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sports and Media, Catherine Martin TD, was appointed to Cabinet in June last year. Her portfolio is a vast one and she has ministerial responsibility for many of the sectors that have been devastated by the pandemic, not least our own. Fall Charlotte has worked closely with Minister Martin and our officials in securing various support for the tourism industry to date and our work together continues. We're very grateful that the Minister has taken time out of a busy schedule to speak to us this morning. So without further ado, please welcome Minister Catherine Martin. Thank you for that introduction, Paul. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Fulcher Ireland's virtual industry event, Survive to Thrive. I would like to thank Fulcher Ireland for inviting me to speak at the launch of their business plans. I'm aware that this event is attended by a large number of representatives right across the industry who are looking for some light at the end of a very dark tunnel. A little later on, Fulcher Ireland will share details of their plans to support the industry in 2021, a crucial year for the recovery of the tourism industry. Similar to the Survive to Thrive theme of today's event, resilience and recovery is the focus of the government's plans. This year's plans will be quite different to those of previous years. The economic and competitive context that tourism is and will be operating in has fundamentally changed because of COVID. In addition, the impact of Brexit on our tourism sector may not become apparent for some time. COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on tourism nationwide. I also acknowledge that the further public health measures necessary to march will be very challenging for the tourism sector. Nonetheless, the rollout of a national vaccination programme is a welcome development and provides hope that in 2021, we will see the beginning of the recovery for the sector but this will not happen overnight. As regards inbound tourism, while tighter travel restrictions have recently been put in place, I want to assure you that the government will make every effort to facilitate inbound tourism at the earliest possible opportunity when it is safe to do so. Research from Tourism Ireland indicates that tourists want to return to Ireland when the time is right, and we will be ready to capitalise on that recovery and quickly when it comes. I am well aware that tourism businesses are struggling greatly in this current climate. 
I know many of you are experiencing severe personal and financial hardship. Recovery will be difficult, and whilst we do not have all the solutions at present, the Government and Fáilte Ireland have implemented a number of measures to alleviate some of the stresses currently being experienced by tourism businesses. In Budget 2021, the Government provided a significant package of tax and fiscal measures to build the resilience of the economy and to help vulnerable but viable businesses across all sectors, including tourism. I also secured a €221 million Euro allocation for tourism to be channelled through Fáilte Ireland and also Tourism Ireland. Investment in the Overseas Tourism Marketing Fund was also maintained to ensure that we can move quickly to promote Ireland when it is safe for tourists to travel to our shores again. Tourism enterprises have benefited from supports such as the COVID Resilience Support Scheme, the VAT Reduction, the Rates Waiver and the Tourism Specific Schemes. I know the crucial role that these extraordinary measures have played in ensuring survival for our sector. Indeed, I understand that tourism and hospitality businesses account for approximately two-thirds of the payments under the CRIS, or €114 million. Euro. I also note that certainty about the future on any issue is in very short supply, and while there has been broad welcome for the sector for supports like CRIS and EWAS, I am aware that there is anxiety about how long they will be available. So I want you all to know that after my discussions with them, the Minister for Finance has provided assurances that the Government will continue to support the sector in the long term through recovery and reopening. There will be no cliff-edge ending to these supports. And we are assessing the effectiveness of continued supports and, of course, how new ones may help. However, I am fully aware that not all tourism businesses have received benefits and some gaps remain. This is why I was happy to secure the €55 million Euro fund for a business continuity scheme in Budget 2021 for strategic tourism businesses to be administered by Fáilte Ireland. The aim is to help those strategically important tourism businesses that are ineligible for other supports to withstand the impact of COVID-19. Later on this morning, Fáilte Ireland will give more details around the eligibility criteria and timelines and the level of grants for this scheme. The scheme will contribute to the fixed costs of identified tourism businesses that are not eligible for CRIS to support their survival. It will provide an equitable level of payment to the CRIS for qualified businesses. Businesses such as tourism attractions, activity providers, caravan and camping sites and others that don't qualify for CRIS will be covered by this scheme. The Government will continue to assess the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy and ensure that appropriate supports are in place to mitigate these effects. We need to understand the new future we are operating in. We are now developing tourism for survival through the pandemic and recovery in the medium and long term. That is why the recovery plan submitted to me by the Tourism Recovery Task Force is so important. The plan was a key consideration in identifying the measures adopted to support the sector in the budget. This will continue to be the case as we evaluate ongoing policy considerations to help the sector survive and recover. You will be aware that I appointed a recovery oversight group in December to oversee the implementation of the plan and monitor the sector's recovery. That group has already met twice, and I expect it will report to me with an update in the coming weeks. It is vital that we support the survival of tourism businesses and maximise the number of sustainable tourism jobs. I recognise that tourism businesses face a significant challenge in retaining and acquiring staff with appropriate skills. Fáilte Ireland will this morning outline how they can best help the tourism sector to survive in 2021 and recover in order to maximise the long-term sustainable, economic, social, cultural and environmental contribution of tourism to Ireland. I would like to thank Paul Kelly and the Fáilte Ireland team for their very hard work throughout a very difficult year in 2020 and for preparing their plans for 2021 as they stand ready willing and able to assist our tourism businesses to survive and thrive. I'd also like to thank each and every member of Ireland's tourism community for the unyielding dedication, endurance and strength you have shown during one of the industry's toughest periods. 
Tourism has faced and overcome many challenges in the past, such as the ash cloud, the financial collapse in 2008, foot and mouth and SARS, and this time we will again. In addition to the extreme financial stress, the physical and mental toll on businesses and employees has been unprecedented. But through these extraordinary challenging and difficult times, I am confident that, with the strong support of government working with the industry, we are resilient enough to overcome the challenges ahead. We can and will get our tourism industry back to be vibrant, sustainable and safe again, as it was in the past. Fulcher Ireland's action plans for 2021 are key to helping the industry to survive and thrive in the year ahead. Thank you, and I hope that you will find today informative and helpful. Thank you, Minister Martin, for your address this morning and for all of your excellent support for the sector since your appointment. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. While you are all probably sitting in your own home watching this on your own, you are joined by hundreds of your colleagues in tourism from every corner of the country and from every sector of the industry. This time last year, we were talking to you about how do we spread our buoyant tourism growth around the country and throughout the year. Back then, tourism accounted for 260,000 jobs. Indeed, in some counties, it provided as many as one in five jobs. But then came COVID, and the sector's revenue declined by a massive 80% or 6 billion euros last year, and tens of thousands of these jobs were lost. To compound the problem for businesses, while revenues all but disappeared, many of the business costs remained. In Fulcher, Ireland, we are acutely aware the stress on tourism employees and business owners and, and their families is now immense. The impact of this pandemic has not been equal across society. Some sectors have been hit harder than, than others, with tourism being one of the hardest hit. Indeed, while tourism within tourism, there is also a differentiation of impact. Businesses in urban areas have lost more than those along the Wild Atlantic Way or in Ireland's hidden heartlands, who were able to salvage part of last summer with a short but strong domestic season. Sectors who rely on international and business tourists and large events have also been particularly hit hard. The government has put a lot of financial support into the sector through wage subsidies, CRSS, restart grants and rates waivers. And while these have been very welcome, they could never replace being able to do business as normal. And some sectors within tourism have not benefited as much as others from government supports. We will be talking about how we will be seeking to improve on this situation later this morning. We know that in addition to the financial impact, the human impact is also devastating, with people desperately wanting to but not being able to work. People feeling isolated, people not being able to get mortgages, or those with mortgages not being able to make payments for months on end. In some cases, people have left or now feel forced to leave businesses and friends that they've worked with for decades. And there are many, many more stories of challenge and resilience throughout the industry. When we in Fulge Ireland hear these stories, we feel a great responsibility a responsibility to do absolutely everything we can to support the survival and prepare for the recovery of the tourism sector, a responsibility to do all we can to help the thousands of business owners and tens of thousands of tourism workers whose livelihoods and businesses have been decimated by this virus. Today, we will be outlining at a high level how we will be exercising that responsibility during 2021. But before we look at 2021, I want to take a few minutes to look back on 2020, as this lays the foundations for the work we need to do now. When this crisis hit, the very first thing we did was establish a COVID advisory group that brought industry agencies and department officials together to identify issues and responses. This group has met 27 times, and I would like to thank all the members of this group for their unwavering commitment to this task since last March. Informed by the feedback we got from this group and informed by extensive insights from 27 separate research projects with responses from 3,000 businesses and 50,000 individuals across 2020, the team in Fulcher Ireland executed the following actions. We refunded 3 million to businesses and fees. 
We delivered 14 separate suites of online support tools, which have been accessed half a million times. We developed and have continuously updated 11 sets of sectoral safety guidelines, which have been accessed 90,000 times. We launched a major new summer marketing campaign, Make a Break for It. We redeveloped and relaunched one of the very best websites in any category in the country now, discoverireland.ie. We launched a COVID-19 safety charter, which was designed to deliver and instill confidence in safety and tourism, with 5,000 businesses registered to date. We developed campaigns to both promote safety indoor dining and to promote accommodation gift vouchers across December. And we didn't give up on business tourism and continue to fight for future business. Even during COVID, we have generated 200 new conference leads worth over 130 million euro, contributing to a total future leads pipelines now worth over 1 billion euros. To help secure this, we delivered 12 virtual sales platforms with over 2,200 global business tourism buyers. We approach leisure tourism in the same innovative fashion. Working with our colleagues in Tourism Ireland, we helped 1,100 Irish industry to engage with international buyers on 17 virtual sales platforms. We worked fast to introduce four new grant schemes, the COVID-19 Adaptation Fund, the Restart Plus grant scheme for B&Bs, the Coach Tourism Business Continuity Scheme, and the Irish-based Inbound Agents Business Continuity Scheme seeking to distribute over 50 million euros to up to 10,000 businesses. With thanks to our minister and department, we secured a further allocation of 55 million euros for business survival in budget 2021. We also established 18 local recovery task forces nationwide. And while we have had some small delays in construction timelines due to COVID-19 restrictions, we have made significant progress on our product development work on the 50 large capital projects, 31 destination town enhancement projects, 10 greenways, five mountain bike trails, and a range of blueways. I would like to thank our colleagues in the OPW, Quilcha, Waterways Ireland, National Parks and Wildlife Service, and all of the local authorities for all of their support in progressing these projects. Just two weeks ago, with our colleagues in the Department of Rural and Community Development, we announced over 3 million funding to 173 projects to improve the outdoor infrastructure throughout the country. And within the next month, working with our colleagues in local government, we will be announcing funding to develop over 20 world-class buildings to provide shared facilities for water sports activities. And this will transform the visitor experience at many of our most treasured beaches. In addition to our own work, we provided extensive analysis and input to our department, the Tourism Recovery Task Force and wider government informing the July stimulus, budget 2021 and ongoing supports. I would like to add my thanks and acknowledgement to the excellent work done last year by all of our departmental colleagues, the Tourism Recovery Task Force led so well by Ruth Andrews and the new Recovery Oversight Group now being led by Noreen Hegarty. I would also like to acknowledge the staff at Folger Ireland for all of their hard work, including all of the late night, early morning and weekend work that was so willingly done. But despite having done all this, we are acutely aware that there is still a lot more to do. We need to continue to support business survival until it is safe to start recovery. And when that time comes, we need to be fully prepared for that recovery. Today, we are going to focus on telling you how we plan to support you to survive through 2021. Rest assured, we will continue to work on a range of strategic initiatives that will help ensure that the industry recovers fast and recovers sustainably once it is safe to do so. We will have a follow-up session to outline these plans to you when we get closer to reopening. So, looking at surviving through 2021, obviously no one has a crystal ball, and while the genetic mutations of COVID-19 may continuously change, the one thing that stays the same is this virus's ability to make any kind of timeline planning or future forecasting nigh on impossible. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thankfully, the vaccine rollout is now underway, but it does look like that tunnel will be longer than many of us might have been thinking even a few weeks or months ago. Based on the information currently available, we are hopeful that some kind of domestic tourism activity can start again this summer. 
in terms of international tourism. As the Minister set out in her speech earlier, while tighter restrictions have recently been put in place, the government will make every effort to reopen international travel at the earliest possible opportunity. But it is too early now to predict when that will be. On balance, it is probably best to plan on the basis that the domestic market will be the primary source of revenue again this year. So when tourism can recover, what might that look like? There will probably be no surprises in this for you, but here's what our research and feedback from Tourism Ireland is saying. Domestic will be first. This will then most likely be followed by markets where there is both geographic closeness and high familiarity, so Britain may well be next to come on stream. Continental Europe will follow, and then the US, with longer haul taking longer to come back. In terms of traveller types, we, ex we expect to come back initially. Those visiting friends and families are likely to be the first to travel, followed by holidaymakers, with the numbers travelling for business perhaps taking a little longer to come back. We may also see higher end price range visitors travelling more in the early part of recovery than the mid price range market. One thing we do know is that there will be thousands of destinations and millions of businesses all around the world desperate to attract visitors. So we will need to be incredibly competitive in the quality of our offering, in our pricing, our sales and marketing efforts. How fast will it come back post COVID? Well, that really is hard to call as there are many challenges to consider, like the economic uncertainty, traveler anxiety, and of particular concern to Ireland is the crisis in the aviation industry. However, balancing that, there are some big positive factors. There has been a huge growth here in Ireland and, glo and globally in the level of household savings. In Ireland alone, the central bank has reported an increase of 13 billion in household savings across 2020. And these savings are now at record levels across all OECD countries. Hard to fathom and, and hard to hear, I know, for anyone in the tourism sector, but some of these savings will eventually find their way into the hard pressed bank accounts of tourism businesses. There are also lots of deferred bookings and a keen interest in getting back traveling again, as lots of people are itching to visit friends and relatives, to get a break from their own locality and to get back to seeing the world. And Tourism Ireland's research shows us that Ireland still ranks very high as an attractive destination to visit post COVID. So on balance, while there is no, there is no doubt we will still have a very tough year ahead of us this year, we do have reasons to be hopeful. Although not quite like this crisis, tourism has weathered many previous crises, and each time we have come back stronger, whether it was foot and mouth, 9-11, or the financial crisis, the deeper the crisis was, the stronger the recovery was, and the higher the post-crisis peak was. COVID-19 undoubtedly dwarfs these previous, previous crises, but I firmly, firmly believe that working together once it is safe to do so again, we can deliver a recovery of a scale befitting the scale of this crisis. With all this in mind, today we are going to talk about three big themes to help get us through 2021. First, Jenny DeSauls, our Director of Sector Development, is going to talk you through our plans on supporting businesses and people. Then Niall Tracy, our Director of Marketing, and Paul Keeley, our Director of Regional Development, will take you through how we will be driving domestic tourism when we can. Paul will also cover with you our plans to help you in preparing for the recovery of international tourism. You will also hear from some of our industry partners about the challenges they face and how they are meeting these challenges head on through innovation, perseverance and supports. Their stories will be familiar to many, if not all of you. Their stories share a common theme, one of loss. Loss of customers, loss of income, loss of employment, but they also share a message of hope. Hope that with the widespread deployment of vaccines, customers will return and businesses will recover. Before we move on with the rest of today's agenda, there are two areas of our plans I will say a few words on now. Firstly, I know some of you are keen to hear details of new financial supports that Folger Ireland will be administering. As I outlined earlier, a 55 million business continuity fund for strategic tourism businesses was secured for Folger Ireland by Minister Martin in Budget 2021. So let me say a few words on this fund now. 
It is important to note the rationale behind the allocation of this money to Fulch Ireland. This money was specifically allocated to support strategic tourism businesses that would not be getting the required support through the CRSS scheme. As the eligibility for CRSS emerged across quarter four last year, it became clear that there are many strategic tourism businesses that are not eligible at all for CRSS. Some of these, like the coach tour operators and inbound agents, we have already schemes in place to support. But there are many other businesses that do not qualify for any of these current schemes. And it is these businesses that are now our priority focus for this scheme. Fulch Ireland are not the revenue commissioners, and it would be impossible for us to have a scheme that exactly mirrored CRSS. But we have designed this scheme to be, in overall terms, a fair and reasonably comparable scheme with CRSS. Another important contextual point is that, as I said earlier, there has been a £6 billion loss in sector revenue, and this fund is only £55 million, or less than 1% of the sector's revenue loss. So while getting this money out quickly is important, working out how to, how to allocate this money in a fair and appropriate way to such a diverse set of business sectors with such diverse business models and needs is incredibly challenging. So the fastest way for us to do this is to break it into two different phases. And today, Jenny Sauls will be giving you details of phase one. Jenny will outline the wide range of business types covered by phase one, but unfortunately, phase one won't cover all sectors. In particular, there are some sectors of businesses involved in tourism transport provision that have not had any support yet and that we, will, we are still working on. And we will cover these areas in phase two, which we will announce further details on in early March. Moving on from survival supports and into driving domestic tourism, those of you who were with us in Croke Park in November 2019 may remember that we unveiled a new domestic marketing campaign called Keep Discovering, which had researched incredibly well at the time. Unfortunately, we only got the opportunity to run one of the three ads we had back then for a few short weeks before COVID struck. Well, we've researched this campaign again, and the good news is that it resonates even more strongly with people now. And domestic holiday makers are telling us that Keep Discovering is the perfect message to follow on from last year's Make a Break for It campaign and is the perfect message to drive home holidays this year. People all around the country have discovered that even in their own five kilometre area, there is lots more to see and do than they previously thought there was. And the idea of being able to extend their realm of discovery to all the known beauty spots and unknown hidden gems of Ireland is hugely appealing to them right now. So in closing, let me refresh your memory by showing you the Keep Discovering Ireland ad, which sets up the campaign by invoking the emotional appeal of the promise of holidaying in Ireland and the joy of discovery. You'll then see the first two regional brand ads for the Wild Atlantic Way and Ireland's Ancient East, which begin to show the specific destinations that can fulfill this promise. I know that many of you out there in Ireland's hidden heartlands, and particularly in Dublin, which has been so devastated by this crisis, will be asking, what about us? And we do have strong plans and campaigns for these areas as well, which Niall Tracy will talk you through in his session. So thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of our speakers. Please keep the questions coming, and I'll see you well. You'll see me again later. Thank you. The first maps didn't look like much. Small, simple, and sparse. But when people started to explore beyond the known to the wonders unknown, the maps began to grow. And so did their world. Wandering strange new lands, climbing the highest peaks, crossing the seven seas. Grappling monsters of the deep. Yes, there was danger to be faced, but oh, what adventure, what joy. And new peoples to meet. And even when they thought the map was finished, there was even more to explore. So, do you know the plough here? Definitely a plane. How is that a plane? It's not a Look at the light. Actually, sorry, yeah. Ireland, keep discovering. You might think you know Ireland's ancient east, but maybe it's time for a closer look. 
an extraordinary glimpse of the oldest of stories. Where the road is less traveled and there's treasure to be found. Where spectacular sights await your eyes. Battles are won, legends are born, and the adventurous spirit always rewarded. Where time travel is no longer a fantasy, and magical castles lie just round the bend. I can't believe there's Vikings in Wexford. I know, it's mad at me. Keep discovering Ireland's ancient east. You might think you know the wild Atlantic way, but maybe it's time for a closer look. To feel the rush of crashing waves. A chance upon a love story steeped in time. To witness the dawn on the edge of the world and open yourself up to something really wild. To wander your way over winding hills. And remember how good time out can taste. <laughs> <laughs> to take to the sea, to see what lies beyond. And beyond, and beyond. Definitely not. Orion's Orion's belt. Keep discovering the wild Atlantic way. Thank you, Paul. The ads look really great, and I, for one, am certainly look forward to planning a few short breaks when it is safe to travel over the coming months. Definitely plenty of ideas to discover and places to find this year. Now, my colleagues are telling me that due to the unprecedented numbers of you joining us, some of you may be experiencing some technical difficulties. If these continue to persist, we will be sharing a full recording of this morning's proceedings with you in the coming days. Just before we hear from Jenny, we're going to hear from some of your industry colleagues from across our four brand regions. We'll hear how they've pivoted their business offerings to meet the demands of the challenging times. Once again, the resilience of our tourism industry comes through. And even during the worst of the pandemic, there are some great innovations and new ways of business coming through. So let's hear what they now have to say. My name is Kruhur Murphy and I own Custom Ireland DMC, operating two brands, Custom Ireland for the Mice Market, and Crafted Ireland, which operates in the Ultralux Leisure Market. Our priority from the outset of the pandemic was to mitigate our losses and those of our clients. With the assistance of our suppliers, we were able to postpone much of our business to 2021. Managing cash flow was an obvious key element of our survival strategy. We made cuts where we could, negotiated discounts and overhead costs, and basically hunkered down for the long road ahead. As a traditional DMC, we felt that the migration to the virtual space wasn't a viable option for us and we decided that a review and complete overhaul of our internal back-end systems and applications, coupled with an upgrade of our client-facing resources, was a more beneficial move. This work became a substantial project, and it is still ongoing, but it will allow us to return to business more streamlined, more efficient, and more innovative. My name is Richie O'Hara. I run Bay Sports. Bay Sports is located at Hudson Bay on Loch Ree, just outside of Athlone. 2020 brought plenty of challenges. Like everyone, we were stopped in our tracks. We devised a reopening plan whereby we undertook a comprehensive risk analysis of operations. Guided by government, HSE and WHO recommendations, we finally opened on July 1st. We reconfigured operations and implemented key changes including relocating shower and changing areas, one-way systems, booking procedures and much more. Thankfully, our customers adapted and embraced the changes and we got very positive feedback. We also adapted and reacted to government instructions as the COVID climate changed. My name is Neve O'Shea and I am General Manager of the Killarney Par Hotel. 2020 was a horrible year for most and hotels took their fair share of pain. The uncertainty and unfamiliarity that pervaded from March was very hard. 
our summer books were pretty much full with international and in particular US business when COVID hit and all of it disappeared. We had to respond quickly and redirect our entire focus to the domestic market and for the most part do it all digitally. Messaging on our site and on our social media platforms became all about families, outdoor activities, nature and the wide open space and safety and fle flexible booking terms became priority. One of our biggest challenges through these lockdowns was and still remains how do we keep our relationship with our customers? A series of videos followed with the storyline based on what Marcus got up to in an empty hotel. Our customers really engaged and this has helped keep our brand alive. My name is David O'Connell and I'm the Sales and Marketing Director at Tifco Hotel Group with 24 hotels and 2,500 bedrooms nationwide. All of the main market demand drivers, international tourism, business tourism, mice, sports, concerts, events, all of those things were stopped. Apart from limited demand for accommodation for essential workers, really what we were left with was the domestic leisure market. And they were naturally drawn to the traditional seaside resorts on the west coast and the southwest and those destinations along the Wild Atlantic Way. So for our Dublin hotels, the challenge was how we could win some of that domestic market share. And finally, then we had to look at the stop-start nature of the lockdown, and that created a lot of uncertainty. For instance, it made it an awful lot more difficult to forecast demand and business levels, and therefore the retention of staff and staffing levels was very difficult when it came to reopening. To overcome the challenges, initially we focused our efforts on developing and implementing operational systems and procedures that focused on the safety and security of our guests and employees. These included no contact in-room dining, pre-arrival e-check-in, electronic menus in our F&B outlets, and other operational measures that would help to limit the contact and reduce the potential spread of the coronavirus. My name is Sean Connick, and I'm the Chief Executive of the John F. Kennedy Trust. We operate the Dunbrody Famine Ship Experience and the Kennedy Homestead. We're based here in New Ross in County Wexford. This year, I also have the honour of being Chair of AVIA, the Association of Visitor Experience and Attractions. As Chair of AVIA and CEO of the JFK Trust, I'm acutely aware of the many challenges that our sector faces as we navigate our way through this COVID crisis serious financial challenges, liquidity issues, and the loss of income combined with the ongoing difficulty of meeting our fixed monthly overheads are the new reality. This, coupled with a devastating impact on our most important asset, our people, has resulted in many of us having to lay off staff, reduce wages, leading to thousands of job losses across the sector. We signed up to the Fault Ireland COVID Safety Charter and transformed our businesses to the new norm, operating with reduced capacity, managing the visitor flow through our attractions and moving our businesses online, welcoming a vibrant domestic market. Marketing campaigns such as Volta Ireland's Make a Break for It and the Welcome to Space, which was done by Killarney Town, greatly supported our efforts and thankfully we succeeded in having a fairly solid July and August. Support from the Falta Ireland team has been fantastic. As an industry, we all had to get uh, creative and think differently, and they really helped me move my ideas forward. Looking ahead, Killarney Town is excited to be working with Falta Ireland on a visitor experience development plan to ensure the future is bright for when better times return for tourism. The support included restart grants from Roscommon County Council, Fulge Ireland's Adaptation Fund, Ireland's Hidden Heartlands Web Improvement Programme and more. One of our standout innovative measures was our new online booking system which effectively transformed our ability to manage visitor numbers. The establishment of the Fault Ireland Online COVID-19 Hub it was so important and beneficial, addressing many of the concerns and challenges we faced as we grappled with the unfolding crisis. Many of us have benefited from HR mentoring and vital financial mentoring, business planning, sales and marketing demand creation programs, well-being supports, online training courses, and the provision of informative webinars and information on the relevant topics. Fault Ireland and Wexford County Council have set up a destination recovery task force for tourism in Wexford. Its purpose is to coordinate industry and stakeholder recovery for the tourism sector in Wexford, providing leadership and expertise to the destination throughout this recovery period. From the start of the pandemic, Fault Ireland stepped in with a range of support structures to assist the industry. As the weeks and months passed, non-monetary supports became vitally important. 
commercial development team organise industry advisory groups, reopening guidelines and staycation campaigns. Looking ahead, we have a strong resolve to play our part in putting Ireland's hidden heartlands on everyone's I must go to bucket list. We know there are great challenges which face us, not least the insurance bogeyman, which, if not addressed comprehensively by government, will result in more closures of leisure and activity businesses within the tourism industry. If there is a silver lining to all this, I think it's, as a nation, I think we've rediscovered what a fabulous country Ireland is to take a holiday in. And as a hotel group, we've rediscovered our home market, which perhaps we had forgotten a little about. And maybe we need to do a little bit more to make sure they keep coming back to our wonderful hotels when this pandemic is behind us. All of us have had to show great resilience as we innovate to ensure the survival of our projects. We welcome the financial supports to date, but we will require more as the crisis continues to hit us hard and we continue to burn our cash reserves and run out of money. What 2021 holds for the industry, it's hard to say. All we can do is time our return to the marketing and sales activity as best we can. When international travel returns, our industry needs to take advantage of the traveller's need for safe destinations. Good morning, everyone. We have just heard from businesses about how horrendous a year 2020 was. And I know that you will relate to the challenges Neve, Sean and the others have mentioned. You and your teams have shown great resilience to the repeat opening and closing, the tough discussions with banks and suppliers and managing your team and the complications from the uncertainty and the need to keep both employees and customers safe. All of this has stretched everyone bringing businesses into territory they have never been before. We have never had a total shutdown of the tourism industry. It was uncharted territory for everyone, including Fault Ireland. Paul has mentioned the extensive programme of supports that we developed last year based on feedback from you. We created the COVID Business Hub, which is a central resource point for you with all the uh, supports that we have online. We will continue to update this across 2021. We learned a lot from the work in 2020 and talking to businesses up and down the country, and this has shaped our plans for 2021. We will be providing supports at every level, at the level of the employee, the business and the sector. Firstly, looking at the employee, we estimate that employment fell by 180,000 across 2020. We all know that people are the cornerstone of our industry. They are part of what makes Ireland unique and key to our Cade Mila Falta. And this last year has put huge pressure on them. In 2020, Falta launched a 100% subsidised employee assistance programme. This is available to you and all of your employees. It offers a rapid response service and mental health support, and it is fully subsidised. You can have one-to-one -one counselling, financial and legal advice, and support and help and crisis management. All of these supports will continue to be available across this year. For owners and managers across the country, managing the workforce has been very difficult. Repeat opening and closures required you to constantly restructure your teams. Last year, we provided a range of supports to help you to help you access POP, TWSS and EWSS, as well as providing advice and support to navigate those HR challenges. This year, we will continue to provide these supports, helping you to navigate HR complexities such as restructuring the team, returning to work, redundancies and legal compliance. The Tourism Recovery Task Force called out the need to develop people to build the necessary skills within the industry to drive survival and recovery. You have asked for support in building team capability, helping to retain them in your business. The key skills required to drive business performance are finance and cost efficiency, revenue and sales, digital and data analysis, and aligning with our enterprise supports, Falter Ireland is developing a continuous development programme in these areas, which we will roll out this year. 
These programs will build the relevant skills within your team, enabling them to implement the business plans developed by our enterprise development supports and driving survival and recovery of your business. In addition to the CPD programs, we'll be continuing to provide the online training mod modules on our e-learning hub. These, those provided last year focus mainly on management and operational excellence, and all of those will be avail available again this year. We have new programs for 2021, including maximizing takeaway opportunities, a wellness program, as well as ways to build revenue and uh, manage conflict resolution. Tourism reput reputation as a career choice has suffered further in 2020. The sector is now seen to be vulnerable and the challenge of repositioning tourism as a career choice has become even more challenging. We will continue to work with the Careers Oversight Group to address labour supply and skills development. We will target students to secure long-term labour supply using tourismcareers.ie and social media campaigns. And we will work with education providers and industry to continue to develop the content for the portal and our social media campaigns. A webinar for guidance counsellors was successfully hosted earlier this month and we are creating a toolkit for them to promote tourism as a career choice. And a subsequent webinar aimed directly at students is also being developed. We are aware that it will be challenging to secure a full time when the sector reopens. And we are working on how we support industry to encourage and promote employment in the tourism sector when we are ready for reopening. In this next section, I will cover the supports we are providing at the level of the enterprise. As we have seen, COVID-19 has turned the world on its head. The markets have changed, consumer behaviours have changed, and the tourism industry has changed. 2021 will see further changes, and businesses will need to adapt how their offering is designed, delivered, marketed, priced, and managed. To do this effectively, we will require strategic leadership, strong management, and operational excellence. Shaped by feedback from you, we have developed a series of programs to support your business. We will look at the business on three levels, strategic leadership at owner, senior, junior manager level, senior management at GM, head of operations level, and operational excellence at department and team level. This will deliver an integrated approach across the business and ensure the right skills are in place to give the business the best chance of recovery and to really strengthen this pace of recovery. Leaders and business owners are critical to the recovery of tourism and you are facing challenges you have never faced before. To succeed, you will need to have the vision to ensure your business adopts flexible strategies to continue trading and to future-proof the business. To support you with this challenge, we have developed a multi-module strategic leadership program to build capability, resilience, and innovation. The program includes modules on crisis management strategy, strategic decision-making, leadership versus management, and driving and surviving train change. And we are using best-in-class and international leaders as experts from Cornell, Lucerne, and IMI. In addition to the strategic leadership program, we will also be providing a series of strategic finance supports, providing advice on debt restructuring, accessing finance, insolvency, and asset utilization. To implement the strategic leadership, senior management capability will be key. We have developed a leadership talent development program for general managers and this is a range of modules, including hospitality finance, operation resilience and innovation, revenue management, and tactical and informed marketing and sales, as well as business development. All of these will be results focused. And in addition, we have developed a commercial performance program for managers leading sales, revenue, and marketing. And there are modules on finance, revenue management, cost per acquisition, and tactical and sales programs. Again, all results focused. At an operation level, we have a series of programs to drive operational excellence. A 
A finance for non-finance module supports all managers across the business to understand how they and their team impact the financial performance of the business. And we have tailored this to function and business type. With the repeat opening and closing and the restructure of teams, on-the-job training is a real need. We will be developing capability at two levels, train the trainer and also at a craft level, showing people how to do the tasks of the job, like laying a table, making a bed or pulling a pint. I spoke to many of you about the challenge of reimagining breakfast in the COVID world, and there is no doubt that this was a real challenge, but you were resilient and we have learned a lot, much of which will be relevant beyond COVID. We have created a bespoke toolkit for breakfast, which looks at re-engineering breakfast, innovating the offering. There are real opportunities to increase F&B revenue, takeaway options such as picnics, sharing breakfast or evening meals. We have developed a wider food programme to support you with operational excellence and to build capability in the culture of lean operations. By that we mean cost-effective operations that deliver an excellent product and service, whether that is in a hotel, a restaurant or a pub. The programme will include menu re-engineering and food costing, finance for, fi for non-finance managers, service to sales, developing SOPs and establishing KPIs and measuring impact. In summary, we will deliver an extensive range of enterprise programmes focused on supporting you and your business at every level, an integrated business approach that will support you to accelerate your recovery and position your business positively for the long term. In addition to supporting people and business, we will also continue to support core tourism sectors. We continue to work nationally with tourism sectoral bodies to ensure that there is a comprehensive understanding of the evolving challenges facing businesses within these sectors. A number of formal working groups are also ongoing, including the Industry Advisory Group and the Careers Oversight Group, chaired by Falter Ireland. We have close working relationships with the key sectoral bodies and we will continue to work with them across 2021, ensuring a continuous flow of information and research to ensure that all relevant parties are aware of the most relevant insights. To shape these engagements, we will continue to carry out industry and economic analysis. We will be monitoring industry performance, tracking visitor numbers and spending, sector performance, and we will also track regional, county and destination level performance. We have a project that will look at the employment outlook in collaboration with key stakeholders, and we will continue to track community sentiment. We will also work with the Department of Tourism on, an, on analysis of a range of policy areas, such as sectoral benchmarking of tourism, where we will look at how ready and able the sector is to return to normal compared with other economic sectors. The outputs of this analysis, as well as sector-specific work on international benchmarking and international best practice, will capture key insights and trends that we will use to develop interventions to support you in making informed decisions about your recovery and to drive domestic and international revenue in the most cost-effective way. We will continue to communicate government guidelines and work with all sectoral bodies to position tourism as a safe sector. And we will reassure the customer with the safety charter campaigns and the B2B stay safe campaigns similar to those we rolled out in 2020. And finally, a subject I know you're all interested in hearing about, Fall to Ireland grants. As Paul mentioned, in 2020, Fall to Ireland administered four schemes the Adaptation Scheme, the b, b Restart Scheme, the Coach Tour Operator Scheme, and the Inbound Tour Operator Scheme. We learned a lot from administrating these schemes, and we are taking these learnings into 2021. In October 2020, the government announced the allocation of the 55 million funding in the 2021 budget to support core tourism businesses to survive the COVID crisis. CRSS is a key support and 239 million has been paid out to the end of last week, 
with 64% of this being paid to tourism and hospitality. Unfortunately, there are a wide range of businesses in tourism that are not eligible for CS CRSS. And the initial priority for the 55 million is to support core tourism businesses not eligible for CRSS. And the objective of the scheme is to help those businesses with their fixed cost incurred in 2020 and 2021. So the businesses to be included in phase one of the scheme are activity providers, including bike tours, surf schools, kayaking tours, angling, boat tours, bus tours, walking tours, outdoor attractions, and equestrian. Tourism golf courses, visitor attractions not eligible for CRSS, so those with charity or not-for-profit status or primarily outdoor attractions. Also included are caravan and camping and cruise hire companies. To be eligible for payment, a business must not qualify for CRSS at any level of restrictions. They must not have received support from the Fall to Ireland previous continuity schemes, such as the coach tour operators or the inbound tour operators. Their average monthly turnover from October 2020 to January 2021 must be less than 75% of the monthly average turnover in 2019. They must have a minimum annual turnover of €50,000 and their fixed costs must be a minimum of 10% of turnover. In addition, they must not be owned or operated by a public body and intend to resume trading in 2021, subject to government restrictions. Fall to Ireland will pay the lower amount of either 9 twelfths of 10% of their 2019 revenue or the fixed costs encouraged. The minimum grant would be 3,750, up to a cap of 200,000 euros per applicant. And this is broadly in line with the support provided in CRSS. The 9 twelfths reflects the period from October 2020 to June 2021 to mirror the potential of the CRSS being paid to June. So what could that look like? Let's look at a few examples. An activity provider with a 2019 turnover of 200,000, 10% of that turnover would be 20,000 euros and nine twelfths of that would mean a 15,000 grant payment. Or in a second example, if you look at a not-for-profit not attraction with a 2019 turnover of 3 million, 10% of the turnover would be 300,000. Nine twelfths of that 300,000 would be 225,000. The grant payment in this case would be 200,000 euros as it has reached the cap. We will have a webinar on phase one of the scheme on Tuesday, the 9th of February at 3 p.m. And this will take eligible businesses through the application form and process. The scheme will open on the 11th of February and will close on Monday the 8th of March. We have designed the application process to be as simple as possible and we are looking to pay out to businesses as quickly as we possibly can. For phase two we are looking at the remaining tourism businesses not supported by CRSS or by any other scheme to date including tourism transport. The detail of phase two of the scheme is yet to be finalised and we will share this with you in March. In summary, the key messages for me today, Fall to Ireland is administering the 55 million in grant schemes. Phase one, we have announced today and a detailed webinar on this will be held on February the 9th. Phase two will be announced and opened by the end of March. We have a wide range of enterprise supports to build capacity across all levels of your business. A strategic leadership programme for owners and senior GMs. Strategic and operational financial programmes supporting you to minimise cost, restructure and access debt. And a senior management programme supported with an operational programme to drive performance. There are a range of supports to help you and your teams at a personal level at a personal level, whether it is mental health 
or managing the wider human impact of COVID. And for your teams, we have a range of upskilling programs, all 100% subsidized and delivered online. We have all this expert advice and the latest, latest updated supports are available on the COVID-19 business support hub found on faultireland.ie. We all know that 2021 will be another tough year. We have anticipated this and in consultation with you, we have developed a comprehensive programme of supports that are practical and apply right now to help you to be ready and able to open your doors again when it is safe to do so. And now to talk you through how we will help get people to come through those doors, I'm going to hand over to Niall, who will take you through how we will be driving domestic demand. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. So listen, Jenny has been talking about what we are doing to get you the resources you need for survival. And part of survival is actually generating sales. So for as soon as you open up, and it's in that context that I suppose we're going to I want to talk to you about the, the marketing campaigns. What I'll share with you over the next 15 minutes or so is kind of what Forge Ireland is doing in order to get as many people from the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland primed to take a domestic holiday this year in Ireland to go to destinations and visit businesses like yours. My name is Niall Tracy. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Fulch Ireland. Uh, Tongue today from my home in Sligo, just on the, the Mayo border. And listen, one of the things we've been doing since lockdown back, back in March is we've been doing a lot of research, talking to consumers about their attitudes to overseas, to travel and to holidays. And one of the things that is very interesting when we talk to this 55,000 people is that, particularly last year, and you remember this from lots of the chat, there's an awful lot of talk about pent up demand and everyone's going to take a domestic holiday. But in reality, that didn't happen. That pent up demand isn't really there. So we know from the research that last summer, 60% of Irish people claimed they were going to take a holiday in Ireland. Only 29% actually took a holiday. Now, and then what was interesting was that where did they go? But they went up going is to places very much in the outdoors, in the kind of rural parts. They're, they were hidden heartlands, wildlands, to go away, et cetera. And places like urban areas, and particularly Dublin, really struggled. But the good news is, is that when they did go on that holiday last year, 85% of them said they had a fantastic time. A real testament to the brilliant experiences you and your staff delivered for those domestic audiences, which is going to be really important in order to help being, to encourage them to come back for more now this year. Now, listen, we're going to continue doing that research and tracking, and we're going to be issuing regular updates to you on just the latest attitudes and thinking that consumers have around travel. So you can either change your offering slightly or, either, or, or adapt your marketing and sales plans in order to try and convert that domestic audience. Now, when the sector was open uh, last year, you, Paul Kelly earlier on showed you some of the campaigns that we launched, uh, things like the, the, the very well received Make a Break for a campaign and the very important kind of the COVID safety charter messages. And when we look into 2021, one of the things that we were again trying to understand is what, what's our, where are consumers' heads at as regards holidays and travel generally in 2021. Now, listen, it's no surprise, and I won't surprise to any of you, that many people are still talking about a foreign holiday. They still love the idea of getting away. And that's fine and totally understandable. But what's interesting also is that many don't actually expect that they will get a chance to go because of different restrictions. So it's more about a bit more living at hope at the moment. But what's also very important to us is that they're also looking forward to taking more domestic breaks. And domestic breaks is very much on their agenda. And what they're looking for is they're looking for destinations that are going to really suit friends and families. So it's like that kind of, kind of group, small groups of people, because that's what they want to do. They want to kind of hang out and spend time with those, with those loved ones. They're once again this year looking for the outdoors, because I don't know you, but I've been, I spend most of my time in my attic here in Sligo. And uh, so just getting out and about and Kind of smelling the, the 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 sea air on a beach, or walking or walking down a walking trail is very appealing, and that's what they want as well. And in a destination, they also actually want. They're very interested in understanding more about destinations. They they want to go to see the attractions. They want to participate in the activities. And yes, the paid ones, which is really important for us, but very but don't underestimate the importance of the free stuff and making your destination a place to go. They want to know there's free museums. They want to know there's walking trails, the cycle paths, that there's maybe a dark skies that they can look at the stars. 
And, and underlying all these messages they are going to be looking for is they're going to be looking for safety message. They want to know that it's going to be safe to travel. So that continuous safety communication is going to be there. Now, Paul, earlier on, shared with you some of the Keep Discovering, our new campaign, Keep Discovering Creative, that, that, that we developed at the, for, um, for Ireland and some of the regional brands. And, be, and when we researched that, it just knocked our socks off as regards how well it does at encouraging people to travel and discover for themselves what Ireland has to offer. So really place the idea of actually we should go. Don't talk about going. Don't be that 20, just you know, get, don't be just 29%, get that 29% back up to that 60% who actually travel. So last year, while we could, we actually went out and shot more creative so that we could land in today with a bang. So we now have Keep Discovering for Dublin also in Ireland's hidden heartlands. And really excitingly, we also have it for 10 individual counties as well. Listen, let me start with Dublin. So why Dublin in this particular case? And listen, it's not a surprise to anybody that, you know, and you know how, how hard it has been for the Dublin tourism industry over the last kind of like nine, nine or 10 months. And actually how challenging it's going to continue to be for 2021. Traditionally, Dublin gets about 83% of its revenue from international visitors and only 17 from domestic. That's about 60, 40 in the rest of the country. So you can see how much more dependent Dublin is. To add, to make it even more challenging, when you ask consume, Dublin, to domestic consumers, well, why do you visit Dublin? They talk about things like matches in Crow Park, concerts in Three Arena, a show in the Borg Gorge Theatre, all of which are closed and are likely to be and are likely to be closed for much of 2021. So what we've been trying to do is, I know our Dublin regional team have been working with many of you on the ground to help you kind of pivot your, your experience and your offering to more of a domestic audience. And that's going to be really important, getting the offering right. And the marketing side, we're going to launch a heavyweight campaign promoting Dublin as a destination. Now, and actually, when we, when we researched it and talked to consumers, well, what would make you go to Dublin? They said, you know what? What makes Dublin unique and special is the sheer breadth of experiences available. So they, that's what makes the city so different to someone like, you know, kind of like West Cork or Hidden Heartlands, because which are more rural, it's that sense of just so many things packed into one, into one space. So in, keep, in, in developing the Keep Discovering Dublin campaign, we've, we've tried to focus on you know, that whole breadth, the, you know, the culture and the history, the, the shopping and the activities, all wrapped up in the vibe of a big city. So let's, if you couldn't, let's play now the Keep Discovering Dublin ad. You might think you know Dublin. But maybe it's time for a closer look. Set sail into the heart of adventure. Where streets sing with possibility. Fill days surrounded by endless delights. Followed by famous city nights. See the city's writer's soul. Find wisdom in the shadows of forgotten giants. God, like as a pet. Would it? Yeah. And the vivid greatness of today. No more There are stories told and untold at every turn and every gateway. That's your love. There's countless lifetimes to be enjoyed here in the world's biggest little town. Match me no pair match day. Keep discovering Dublin. So as um, as a dub myself, you know, growing, you know, I originally, I, I know how hard it is to sometimes be a tourist in your own town. You know that old cliche. And so actually, if we're going to help the to, to your, your business in Dublin kind of like survive this year and to thrive, what we're going to, have to do is actually get as many different types of people to come to come visit Dublin. And one of the groups we're going to go after is actually Dubliners themselves. So we're also going to launch a campaign, focus on Dubliners, in, in encouraging them to actually be a tourist in your own town. Go see some of the amazing experiences and things to do that are, are on your doorstep, but you haven't not quite got around to doing them. So whether it's, you know, a Dublinia or Mali, or the amazing kind of 14 Henrietta Place, which is kind of a Edwardian, you know, which is a you know, Edwardian building and kind of like showing what life was also like as, as a tenement house. Amazing experiences. And we're going to be encouraging Dubliners to get out there and spend their money in your business kind of over the course of this year. But listen, let's leave Dublin for a moment and let's move a bit west and over to Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. This is a very different situation in Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. Uh, in many ways, the region has two big advantages. One is that it's actually, it's really accessible to everywhere in the country. Like there aren't that many places that aren't, that aren't two or two and a half hours away from the region. 
And secondly, I suppose it's got an abundance of outdoors, which, as I mentioned earlier, is something the consumers are really looking for. So in developing the Ireland's Hidden Heartlands Keep Discovering ad, we wanted to bring that sense of the outdoors and the range of things to do to life. So you'll see in this ad that we've, you know, we've talked about, we're talking walking, cycling, kind of water-based activities. And you can see this, you know, show how it's appealing, both just not just for, for adults, but also for families. So if we could play the Ireland's Hidden Heartlands Keep Discovering ad, please. You might think you know Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. But maybe it's time for a closer look. To weave through labyrinths, lush and green, where pockets of pure escape emerge from the blue, and every look holds thrilling relics of epics that have already been sung. Here, every stone upturned leads to new adventure, and memories are simply made. There are many ways to get from A to B in this hidden heartland maze. But each is unforgettable in a thousand different ways. Keep discovering Ireland's hidden heartlands. So, as I mentioned earlier, we do know from research that the Ireland ad and the Region Experience brand ads do a really good job at communicating, I suppose, the, the joy of travel and discovery. What was then interesting when we were talking about consumers about the ads is that they were still not actually sure about where to go. Like, we assume that people know Ireland well, but actually people don't know Ireland. They've actually got a quite limited understanding of what there is to do in many, many parts of the country. And actually, when we talk to them, what seems to be, from a lot of people, they know where they grew up, let's say they grew up in Clare, they know where they're living now, maybe they're living in Dublin, and they know where they traditionally gone on holidays, let's say it was West Cork. But outside of those three areas, they're not quite sure actually what Wexford has to offer versus Mayo, versus Donegal, versus in the Heartlands. So one of the things we wanted to do was actually to bring that to life, actually by creating these 10 pieces of actually county creative to really identify some of the more surprising and, and special things in, in the counties that, that actually can make that a really great destination to travel to. Now, of course, in any piece of film, you can't show everything there is to do. So it's really just trying to kind of give people a broader sense of the county and hopefully see what if this county will be appealing for them. And the reason why that, again, that's so important is we just don't want people to take one break this, this in 2021. We need to take multiple breaks in Ireland in 2021. So they may go back to the traditional place, but we need them to go discover other locations. And that's what, this, what, what a lot of these county ads are going to do for us. So let's have a look at one of them here with the Keep Discovering Kerry. And again, I suppose in this one, keep an eye out of how we've kind of tried to show off both the kind of the really well-known kind of experiences as well as the hidden gems, because it's this mixture of the two that really plays that sense of discovery that we know consumers are, look are looking for. So let's, so we can play the Kerry ad, please. You might think you know Kerry, but maybe it's time for a closer look at a world where charm and magic is in the wind and the wild Atlantic's beauty is only matched by its bounty. Gaze on scenes fit for a kingdom and the majesty that awaits resting at Dunlow. <laughs> Let winding streets lead you towards memories waiting to be made. and simple joys always to be remembered. So conquer where Karen Tuhill calls and the lure of land and sea is filled with rich rewards. Keep discovering Kerry. So initially, our plan is that we're going to use the likes of the Ireland ad and the Reach Experience brand ads on channels like the TV. You know, so you'll see that on kind of TV on, on TV channels. While we're going to use the, the county creative on much more targeted, particularly through digital channels. Because, because you know that through online, we can be much more targeted about actually who we're going to encourage to go to different destinations. So, for example, we know that people will travel maybe between two to three hours for a short break in Ireland. So that means we can target people by geography. So that might mean that we'll promote Donegal to people who live in Derry or Fermanagh or Sligo. Well, we'll promote Wexford to people who live in Tipperary, Waterford, and to into into Wexford. 
But what's also really important about that is that while we might set up the idea of going to Donegal or going to Wexford, we all know consumers are spending far more time now afterwards than doing extra research online. So our Discover Ireland website needs to be, again, a kind of a window to the region and to the destination to make people go, oh, yeah, look at that. Because they use our website and lots of other websites for research. So we're going to, we, so in, over the last year, we have rebuilt Discover Ireland in order to be a website that really delivers for consumers and hopefully will really deliver for you. So it's much easier to use. It's got much more of the information consumers are looking for, particularly about the destination itself and all the great things to see and do. And really importantly, there's a real focus in it as regards trying to drive referrals, referrals directly to your booking engine, to your website, to your phone number. And that's going to be a key metric for us of success of this website. We're going to continue to track it and continuously improve it. So we're driving more and more people directly to you who are interested in going to your destination and into your business. But listen, the information we have on the website about your business is only as good as the information you have provided us. So please, what I ask you to do is please check your listing. Check to see, have we got the right text, the right visuals? Have we got the right links to your booking engine, your website, your emails, your phone numbers? Because this is a, win a shop window for you. And we're going to try, try, try and drive as many people to your, to, your, to your business as we can. So underlying all these campaigns is going to be safety. So as I mentioned, safety is going to be something consumers are going to continue to look out for. So our, our COVID-19 safety charter message is all about reassuring consumers that you in your tourism and hospitality business are doing everything you can to keep them safe. And we're going to have that campaign kind of going onwards and uh, throughout the year. And I think that use of the safety charter is going to be a really important signal for consumers that you are going to be, a, that you're also doing the right things and keeping them safe. So when will all this happen? Well, listen, we're ready to launch now, is the, is the bottom line. So once the, once the government and the health advice says that we can act proactively encourage people to travel and to, take, and, 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 to, uh, and to go on holiday in Ireland, we will be there and we will be there with a bang. When I look at the level of investment we're going to put it behind it this year, for the equivalent period of time, it's going to be about double what we invested in 2019. That's how much kind of extra money we're going to put behind this because we know how important getting your cash register to turning over money is going to be to your survival. So listen, in summary, where are we? We are looking at a very heavyweight investment in Full Charles Domestic Marketing to encourage people to get out there and travel. We have got some world-class creative, which is fantastic to be able to say, and we also now have it right down to the county level. We're going to have a real focus in Dublin because they have a particular need and, and they need to, we really need to kind of relaunch them for domestic consumers. And all underpinned with a strong safety message about travelling in Ireland. So between all of this, we think we're going to really help prime the domestic audience to take that domestic trip in Ireland and hopefully visit your business and help you survive. But to help you get ready for that domestic opportunity, Paul Keeley, our Director of Regional Development, is going to talk to you now just about some of the different initiatives we have in place to support your destination and your business. So to tell us all about that, I'm going to hand you now over to Paul. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Niall, and good morning, everyone. Well, look, by now you'll have gotten a strong sense from the presentations that 2021 is going to be another incredibly tough year for the tourism sector. And I think in particular, we're not likely to see much movement uh, from domestic consumers and indeed international consumers in the first half of the year. So the hope has to be that by collaborating well together, we can actually make sure that we make the most of those opportunities afforded by the reopening of domestic and international in the second half of the year. 
And core to our, I suppose, progress in that space will be that we stay close to each other and we get our collaboration right. And to try and make that happen, we have a number of ways of engaging with you, our one-to-one -one business partnering, uh, our destination recovery networks. We have destination and experience development networks around the country. Uh, and we have product groups in place around business tourism, golf and ultralux. And what you've seen from the earlier videos is when we get that collaboration right, we're capable of making good work happen and delivering good results. So in terms of working together, there are five areas of focus that I wanted to talk about today. First, I want to talk about ensuring products and destinations optimise the opportunities presented by domestic. Secondly, that we work on reopening and animating our key urban areas that we prepare destinations for the return of international leisure travellers, that we support the digital transformation of our industry, and last but not least, that we get a business tourism recovery strategy in place that delivers sustained growth and a healthy pipeline of business into future years. So what I'd like to do now is to walk through each of those, give you a little more detail, uh, and as I say, we can take some Q&A at the end. So the first opportunity you're going to get to get revenues back into your business is going to be from the domestic marketplace. Paul Kelly in his opening talked about the savings in the economy, and we have to assume that there will be a pent up demand to travel again once public health authorities tell us it's okay to do so. Nile has given you a flavour of a really strong national marketing campaign that will flex regions and local counties. And importantly, from our perspective, what we need to do then at our task force level uh, in each destination is make sure that we activate and align with those national campaigns. Everybody's budgets are tight. The last thing we need to be doing from a marketing perspective is competing with each other for space uh, and undermining the power of each other's budgets. So by collaborating, by giving each other early sight of where we're showing up, we can make sure that we're not uh, undermining each other's efforts and that we optimise our respective spends. And equally, on sales promotions, we're going to have a number of platforms available across the year. Uh, we have that in place for two reasons. One, to try and reach as many consumers as possible. And two, to give you the flexibility or the choice as to where you allocate your stock. But critical will be if Niall's work is successful in terms of priming interest, then you've got to be available for sale. So I would encourage you to work with us on the ground in terms of making sure we have stock available and that we're prompting the consumer to purchase. The second broad area that I want to talk about is our urban hotspots and in particular how we, I suppose, harness the outdoor environment in our urban hotspots. We know from our research that the consumer retains a strong interest in visiting our cities and towns, but we are going to be faced with a lingering anxiety about public safety and personal safety uh, over the course of the year. And we know that public health guidelines are going to continue to restrict capacity in the hospitality sector. So what we have is a package of measures that we want to implement in conjunction with our local authority partners to support and to help accelerate the fantastic work that they're already doing around the country to improve our urban environments and to make them a much more compelling and reassuring place to visit uh, for both locals uh, and visitors alike. And the first of those things I just wanted to mention briefly is our Destination Towns Capital Grants Project. We have 31 projects now live around the country, which we're going to be implementing across the course of the year. And what they're all designed to do is to improve the public realm in those towns, make them much more attractive places to visit, uh, to linger in, and ultimately to deliver benefits to the hospitality sector in. If people dwell, people will spend. So these projects will in improve public squares, parks, uh, new trails uh, and improving the storytelling in general so that each town gives the best account of itself. The second broad area that we're looking at here uh, is an outdoor dining grant scheme. So we know that we're going to be pinched in terms of having sufficient spaces for people to eat in. 
we've been working with the planners and local authorities to develop a better a set of best practice guidelines for outdoor seating uh, and urban animation. Uh, and we've in doing that, we have actually benchmarked best practice both domestically and overseas, where we've looked at a lot of northern European cities who have the same cha uh, challenges in terms of weather as we would have, so that these guidelines ultimately come up with practical solutions that are appropriate to the Irish environment. So our intent is to get this grant scheme up and running in quarter one, building in much needed capacity into our key urban areas uh, and impacting as many consumers as possible in terms of enticing them into uh, our cities and towns. A related scheme that we intend to introduce in quarter two is an urban animation grant scheme. So again, one of those challenges we're going to have because of public health guidelines across the year is your know, mass gatherings won't be welcomed. Uh, and so one of those challenges we have and within the absence of festivals, how do we actually build intrigue and interest into our key cities and towns? And so what this scheme is about doing is looking at best examples in public art, creative use of lighting, and using that to actually add atmosphere to our key cities and towns, uh, making them interesting places to explore, to linger in, and as I say, whether it's going for a meal, uh, you know, giving you something to do before the meal or after the meal, and just in generally enticing people to come and explore our cities and towns. So that's the second scheme we're going to introduce. We're going to introduce that in quarter two, uh, and it will be run in conjunction with the outdoor uh, uh, dining scheme so that we can make maximum impact in those key urban hotspots. Uh, both schemes are, uh, are being finalised in terms of the guidelines at the moment, and our intent is to actually bolster the funding for that by using any surplus from the adaptation grant schemes to try and make sure that we can have as much impact as possible to support hospitality businesses in our key hotspots across the remainder of the year. Now, I mentioned uh, the challenges with mass gatherings, and that uh, r brings me to festivals. And I do want to say something about festivals. You know, they've long been recognised uh, as a driver uh, in terms of getting locals and visitors into our cities and towns. But the reality here, I suppose, is that because of public health guidelines, we're unlikely to get uh, all of the traction we might want with festivals in 2021. And already in the first half of the year, we've seen a lot of festivals cancel or move to a virtual format. And from our perspective, that means obviously the tourism impact is considerably reduced. But what we have done is we've put some business continuity funding in place to help support those brands and to make sure that they're available for 2022. So in similar vein, I suppose, we're keeping a watching brief uh, on festivals and events that are scheduled for quarter three and quarter four. Our intent is to have formed a view and take a position uh, on funding for quarter three events by mid-March and by late April for those events in quarter four. If we're confident that the events can take place, then we'll uh, put the normal grants in, in place. If it looks like they're not going to happen, then we'll put, again, a business continuity arrangement in place to make sure that we can support those businesses and make sure they're in place for the year ahead. And just finally uh, on festivals, I suppose, if we accept that it's going to be a challenging environment for the remainder of the year and we may not have festivals uh, in place to animate our towns and cities, then one of the things we may need to do at a level of the, de at the destination task forces is think about creative solutions. How else can we add a bit of life and a bit of atmosphere to our cities and towns? Uh, and one example of progress in that space is Winter in Dublin, where we've been able to, with partners to design a program of events and activities that uh, you know, can be done in a controlled way, won't trigger any issues with mass gatherings, and won't therefore uh, you know, cause any difficulties uh, in the second half of the year. What they will do is entice locals into the city uh, and entice visitors into the city and make sure that they'll have a good time. We've researched the concept with consumers and it has gone down a treat. If we have the festivals like Bram Stoker, like New Year's, etc., that's the cherry on top. But even without those, we're now confident that we have a programme of activity that can actually support the hospitality sector through the latter parts of this year. And that opportunity is there for task forces to explore right around the country. Let me move on to the third area, uh, and that's about being ready for international markets. Now, look, with each passing month, 21 looks softer and softer from an international perspective. But 
it doesn't matter. We still have to be up and at it in terms of being visible and being ready and doing business for 2022. And we're going to do a number of things to try and support you in this space over the course of the year. We're going to have a strong portfolio of virtual in Ireland events. Uh, chief among these, obviously, is Mehel, and virtual Mehel will take place on the 14th, 15th, 16th of April. Uh, you can register for that uh, through the Fault Your Ireland Trade Portal. The portal opens tomorrow and will stay open until the 16th of February. Uh, if you register, what you'll uh, you will ultimately be able to offer is up to 60 appointments over the three-day period. Last year, we had 6,700 important appointments for people, an opportunity to put the best of Irish businesses and destinations in front of buyers. Our ambition this year is to top that. I also want to acknowledge the work that our colleagues in Tourism Ireland are doing. Uh, they are working with a range of third parties overseas to get a sense of what a strong international calendar of, of events might look like for 2021. And again, that programme will be finalised in the coming weeks and will be shared with you on the Fault Your Ireland Trade Portal. And you can register through the Fault Your Ireland Trade Portal for the events. And again, a big call out and a big thank you to our colleagues in the market offices. In quarter one, they have made available to us 277 spaces for Irish businesses to get out there opposite international buyers uh, on both B2B platforms and webinars. So again, a big thank you and a really important opportunity in terms of getting uh, key messages out there about our destinations and our product and reassuring international markets about what it is we have to offer. And just to reassure you that throughout the year, we'll be bringing to the table a suite of insights and sales capability supports to make sure that in those engagements with buyers, you have all the backup you need to have confidence in terms of how you pitch your product and how you pitch your destination. And speaking of destination, the final area I wanted to talk about in this area are the destination and experience plans that we are working with uh, people around the country on. They are really working at a destination level to take a long-term view about how we can, I suppose, put the best possible version of our destinations out into the international and domestic marketplaces, shaping new saleable products and experiences and keeping buyers excited about what it is we have to offer as a destination. We have a lot of activity happening across the year and we'll keep you plugged into that work through our uh, local regional teams. So let me move on to the, uh, the, uh, the fourth area uh, that I wanted to talk about. And that's uh, the whole area of digital transformation. You know, we already knew that consumers were increasingly moving to the online environment, but what COVID and the, uh, and the pandemic over the past number of months has done is accelerated that, uh, I suppose, that surge in online activity. So consumers more than ever are planning and booking their holidays online. And our available research suggests that Ireland and in particular sectors within the tourism industry are lagging behind their international competitors. And we want to work with you to remedy that. So we have a three year program in place uh, and if it needs to go longer, it will go longer to make sure that we get a step change in the digital performance of Irish industry. And we have already audited the sector. Uh, and what we do know is that businesses are in a different place. So people have different levels of maturity and, and therefore a one size all won't work as a solution. So we have five modules that we're going to be working on. And they are around building bookable experiences, looking at uh, enhanced online bookability and your connected distribution onto global distribution platforms, looking at website improvement, looking at online marketing and looking at transformative content in particular for the accommodation sector so that they put the best version of uh, themselves and their destinations out into the marketplace. Our ambition in this year is uh, to support about 500 businesses through those five modules. We're up and at it in terms of auditing 1,350 uh, attractions and activity providers at the moment, because I think in particular, those sectors are where we can make the greatest impact in the short term. And just again, to remind people, we are really conscious that money is tight in businesses. There will be significant grant aid there to support businesses engage with us uh, on these modules. And we're really, really confident and excited about this project. You saw from the earlier video, Richie O'Hara talking about some of the work we've done with him in Baseboards. We can really transform business performance 
by working on our digital footprint and making sure that we're available for sale in the online environment. The fourth area I want to talk about um, um, is business tourism uh, recovery. Uh, this is a critical sector uh, and more than most, it has felt the pain over the last number of years because it is entirely focused on international. And the last 12 months, uh, I suppose, has seen uh, clients cancel their events or postpone their events. And that pattern has rolled into 2021. Uh, you know, from our perspective, we have to move to remedy that. And I want to thank uh, our industry partners and our partners in the regional convention bureaus for working with us on the development of a new business tourism strategy. Uh, that is going to look at three broad areas around sector supports, uh, around leads generation and leads conversion. And let me just talk a little bit about that sector supports piece. One of the things we took a very pragmatic decision about from the outset when we started to work on this in 2020 is that we would not just be f uh, focused on the future, but that we would actually deal with those short-term issues that had to be dealt off in the sector. Uh, we needed to have the sector available for sale and available to do business if the strategy was going to do anything uh, going forward. And to that end, we put a strong suite of liquidity measures in place to try and make sure that key parts of our business tourism infrastructure uh, remain afloat and remain available to keep Ireland uh, visible in the international marketplace. We've put operational guidelines in place to support controlled events. We have a capacity and planning calculator in place to help people in the bidding process. And we are continuing to, to look at the competitiveness agenda. We're very mindful that every destination is now going to be looked to reboot uh, in the years ahead. We know we have challenges in terms of issues like VAT on our conference venues, VAT as it pertains to services booked through Irish PCOs and DMCs. We want to see what we can do in that space to make sure that in a bidding scenario, Irish industry more than punches out opposite international competition. We're also going to take a look at our brand as part of this exercise, making sure, again, that the Meet in Ireland brand is fit for purpose uh, and really stands up uh, the creative and professional industry that we have and stands up the promises that we're making in the international marketplace. When we look at leads generation, I don't need to tell anybody uh, on this call, that's the lifeblood of the industry. So we are going to do a root and branch review in terms of revisiting and re-energizing every facet of our leads generation activity, our conference ambassador and buyer referral programs, our My Supports Funds, our Industry Innovation Fund, our Sales Supports Funds. We're going to look at our digital assets and we're going to look at the range of sales platforms that are available to industry. Uh, anything that we can do to actually make sure that we are out there uh, and unlocking potential opportunities from an Ireland Inc. perspective. And of course, generating the leads is no good if we then can't convert them. So again, we're going to be looking with our industry colleagues at what can we do to actually improve our conversion rates. And certainly some of the issues that have surfaced there already are around, you know, making sure that we have a consistently excellent standard in terms of our bid documentation, whether it's coming from industry, from RCBs uh, or, or from the Meet in Ireland team. Uh, and the other area we're going to address are gala dinner venues. That's long been uh, an Achilles heel for the Irish business tourism sector. We estimate that over the 2015 to 2019 uh, period, we've lost 100 million euros in leads because we couldn't adequately satisfy potential clients in relation to the quality of gala dinner venues available to us. And we're going to put that right now. So in quarter three of this year, we're going to be launching a twin uh, approach to gala dinner venues. We're going to have a small grant scheme uh, where the grant value will be 200,000. And what we'll be looking to do there is to get uh, uh, venues in place, three in Dublin, four outside Dublin would be the ideal. And they can be temporary in nature or permanent in nature. So we could be looking at temporary structures like stretch tents or glass units, uh, or indeed then refurbing uh, the insides of a building. But the key common denominator is they have to have a wow factor about them. So we're going to open that, as I say, in quarter three, uh, and we will review the responses in quarter one of next year. And in parallel, in quarter three, we're going to run an expressions of interest to see if we can find a partner to work with us on the development of a large scale gala dinner venue that would seat 800 plus delegates. Uh, again, we want to make sure that no matter what the client asks, uh, that we, Ireland is available uh, and has an offering to actually compete for any business that's available out there. So again, 
key pieces of work which we've long desired and now going to be implemented this year. So just moving on and finally on the business tourism space, whilst all of this is going on and whilst we work on that strategy, we do have the tactics in place to get business on the books for this year. Our intent, working with industry partners and RCBs, is to get 200 million in leads generated for future years and to convert 100 million euros in business for future years. So both very stretching targets. That's about 50% of what we've actually achieved in 2019. But we have great product, we have great industry, and hopefully as confidence builds in international marketplaces again, we think it's right that we stretch ourselves in going for some recovery this year. So let me, uh, I suppose, pause at this moment and just, uh, I suppose, remind you again of those five areas of focus if we can collaborate well together and make progress on these things, I'm confident that we can actually get short-term revenues into your business and we can start to position ourselves to get business for future years into the books. And importantly, we will have made the changes both to our business processes and to some of our key product that will allow us to sustain that growth into the future. So look, let me finish now by just reminding you, I suppose, of the presentation today. Thank you for sticking with us. What you'll have heard at the outset was Jenny talk about, I suppose, the suite of supports we have to help businesses survive and, challenge, and, and deal with the challenges of liquidity uh, and capability, be that around uh, your know, capability to level at a firm or indeed dealing off those issues around the wellness of our key human capital assets in the industry. Niall will have talked to you about the opportunities in domestic and really set out a really powerful campaign that we'll have in place to support you over the year ahead. And obviously just most recently, what I've talked about is how we can work together on the ground to make the most of a range of opportunities that can position us well for the reopening of domestic and international markets. Thank you for your time this morning. Please do stay close to us over the coming years. Our commitment is to work with you through the variety of mechanisms that I talked about at the outset. Stay safe, the best of luck in the year ahead. And I'm gonna hand you over now to Fiona Monaghan to tee up the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. While Paul catches his breath, I'm going to introduce the next session or the next part of our session this morning, our questions and answer session. And just before I do, my colleagues have been telling me that there are over 5,000 of you joining us this morning on today's call. That is unprecedented. And I'm glad I didn't know that before I started or I probably would have been very nervous. Anyway, on to our Q&A session. And the questions have been flying in all morning. So back on the panel from Falter Ireland, we have Paul Kelly. Jenny DeSauls and Paul Keeley. And we're also joined by Ruth Andrews. Ruth is a renowned tourism professional and well known to many of you and wears many hats. But today she is joining us as chairperson in her role of ITIC, the Irish Tourist Industry Confederation. And Ruth chair chaired the Tourism Recovery Task Force last year, which developed a three year recovery strategy for the sector. Good morning, Ruth, and thank you for joining the panel. So as I said, the questions have been fast and furious and I'm going to go first to Ruth. As the representative of industry with us this morning, where is the industry at now? And what do you think are the key takeaways from this morning's session? Thanks Fiona and good morning everybody. Wow, well, well, it's on a very comprehensive and extensive portfolio of supports provided. session this morning and to Jenny Nile and Paul Keeley for the great presentations that were provided outlining the myriad of supports that you and the team are rolling out. As has already been said, tourism continues to bear the greatest impact of any other sector as a consequence of this pandemic, a truly existential years with the announcement of approved vaccines and their rollout, lifting all our spirits and hopes for the earlier recovery in 2021. We now know that that expectation, for the moment at least, appears to be a bit further away from our reach and certainly shifting towards the latter half of the year. I know that the industry practitioners who have joined us in the thousands of you said, Fiona, for this morning are desperate for those green shoots of recovery and are increasingly worried 
and stressed about their businesses, for their jobs, for their livelihoods and the industry we are all so passionate about. So first to all of you, can I say we are with you, we are collectively better together. And as you will have heard from Fáilte Ireland this morning, collectively we are doing everything possible to support you and help you through what can only be described as our darkest days. We are now wintering this crisis and we have As you've heard this morning, there are supports being provided by the team in Fáilte Ireland who are staying close to the industry. They're listening to our needs, providing those financial supports and, and the educational supports for our people, as Jenny outlined. We're ready with domestic campaigns to targeting that increasingly important market, as Niall has, has provided, and supporting the industry to be ready to return to in and provide a great overview on that. And it was really heartening to hear those great stories by our industry of their fantastic ability to adapt. Having chaired the Tourism Recovery Task Force, I'm delighted to see that my fellow TRT colleague, Paul Kelly, and his team are focused on the delivery of the survival recommendations today. And I know that Fáilte Ireland are working hard to deliver this as quickly as possible for tourism businesses, while still I know too are keeping a firm eye to recovery and the supports that will be needed to get us to and through that phase. As chair of the Irish Tourism Industry Confederation, I know too from you, the industry, that what businesses need now more than ever, given the inability to trade due to the current public health protection restrictions, is cash flow and business continuities, uh, continuity schemes um, that were announced this morning. What we need most is some certainty about when we can reopen our business and return to viable trading. But we understand, given the existing circumstances, that this is a difficult deliverable at this moment in time. Fiona, getting back to your question you specifically asked, I can tell you that the answer is more at ITIX conference week on February the 10th, when we launch our latest edition of our survival and industry revival plan. However, I can share more briefly the key immediate asks priorities for survival, which include the following. We need an urgent rollout of Ireland's vaccination programme and an understanding of the key milestones of that rollout that will enable tourism and hospi hospitality businesses to reopen. We need assurances that the EWSS will be extended at its current levels for the rest of 2021 to protect those jobs and the intellectual capital of our industry and our people. We need a doubling of our tourism agency's budgets to support business survival with further business continuity schemes and to maintain and kickstart international marketing to winning back that vital 75% of export earnings. We need the stay and spend scheme to be redesigned and relaunched as a matter of urgency. We'd like to see the revision and the extension of the CRSS to cover more broadly all of the tourism sector. And of course, those all important local authority rates waiver again. We also need to understand and, and have scaling up of rapid testing options as eventual more cost effective replacement options to PCR testing for travel and a comprehensive review to the EU traffic light system to include a safe travel passport. The extension of the 9% tourism VAT rate until 2025. The, the welcome reinstatement of this to the end of 2021 will have little value in the short term and we need longer term certainty, which should be easy for government to do now and will, as it did before, provide a win-win for industry and the exchequer. And finally, the, the con continuation of bank moratoriums on loans for business and similarly for moratoriums on loans and mortgages for our people in tourism who by virtue of their employers availing of EWSS may not be availing of those at the moment. Those are the nine essentials, Fiona, and there are, there are more, but I can also tell you that the combined recommendations of the TRT three-year strategy and ITIC survival and revival plan, if enabled by government, will not only see this industry survive, but as Falcha have rightly team, themed this morning's session, will thrive in the future. We have the opportunity to build back better and this industry, as it has proven in the past, can more than now rise to the challenge. So there's where... 
Thank you, Ruth. And apologies, there was a little glitch in some of the audio during Ruth's um, response there. So plenty for us all to, to collaborate on and to keep going to make sure that as we do survive and continue to thrive as the conditions set to return. There's been a lot of interest this morning as well in the marketing campaigns that were discussed throughout the presentations. Paul Kelly, I'm going to come to you next. The county ad, ad approach is being very well received from our listeners, but people are wondering, what about the other counties? Are we going to be developing creative for all counties? Yes, Fiona, uh, we have, um, uh, we, we will be doing marketing campaigns for all counties, you know, in terms of, we, we've, as I said, the outset, we'll have a national, regional and county level focus in our campaign, and we will have campaigns for all counties. We have 10 of the top tourism counties where we have specific uh, 60 second uh, uh, long video content for, for, for those to promote those counties. Uh, and we, we'll have different types of content for different counties. But, uh, but obviously, you know, in terms of our priority is to get as many people back to work as quickly as we can. And we, so that does require, I suppose, those counties that have got more of a tourism economy to get more focus, to get more people back to work. But we will be looking at, we will be making sure that we've got uh, ca campaigns for every county. And Paul, while you're there, the adaptation scheme has come up again this morning, wondering, is there going to be any funds left in this scheme and how, is, how will they be dispersed? Yeah, we're still we're still working through. Uh, we've paid out, uh, you know, all of the businesses that had uh, that have you know kind of completed the appropriate documentation forms have all been paid out on, on the adaptation scheme. But there is still about a thousand businesses that we're still waiting for further documentation, etc. From where we're trying to work with those businesses to to make sure as many as possible of them can avail of the benefits of, of, of that scheme. So we're still working through that, which means we don't have a final number as to how much was. Uh, how much of that scheme is going to be is going to be left over? There will be some. Uh, we can tell that at this stage that there will be a surplus left in that scheme, uh, and we're not sure. We're in conversations with our own department, and I know our department are talking to the Department of Public and Expenditure and Reform uh, as to whether as to whether we can retain any of that. But if if we can. Uh, which is an if at this stage, but if we can, our intention would be that that would go into the uh, capital to bolster the support for the outdoor dining scheme uh, that would, so we would adapt effectively our outdoors to make them more COVID friendly uh, for, uh, for, for outdoor dining across this summer. Thank you, Paul. Jenny, an awful lot of chat coming in this morning on the business continuity schemes. A lot of welcome for the schemes, a lot of detail in there in your presentation. Maybe I could ask you maybe to reiterate the key points of the schemes and the details for industry so that they can be well positioned to, to look at the schemes and the webinar that you mentioned in your presentation. Thanks, Fiona. Yes. So as I mentioned um, earlier, uh, the, the grand scheme that we have announced today is really focused on supporting core tourism businesses that are not eligible for the CRSS. So the 55 million that was given by the government was really to target those gaps in CRSS. Fault Ireland's remit is tourism and our grant monies are really on focusing on the core tourism businesses so that they will be in a place to be customers for that wider business community like laundry providers, event caterers, drinks dis distributors, etc. So just in terms of the eligible businesses, so we talked um, earlier about activity providers. So there's a wide range of businesses in there and the activity providers from kayakers to walking tours, etc. And then you've got caravan and camping and cruise hire companies, as well as not-for-profit uh, attractions. So in terms of, I know there's a lot of questions about being able to get more information. So as you mentioned, the industry will receive an industry support guide following today's uh, webinar, and that will have all the information that we've shared um, with them today. In addition to that, there'll be a webinar on the 9th of February, and that's for eligible businesses. And what we will do then is we will take them through the application form and the, act, uh, and the application process. And I know we've had questions on how quickly will the uh, monies be paid out. So it's really important that the application form is filled in correctly. And once all of the appropriate documentation is complete and has been verified and subject to state aid approval, we will evaluate, approve and pay businesses within three weeks. 
Thanks, Jenny. While, while we're still on these topics, Jenny, a lot of questions coming in this morning around the area of staff retention in the industry and retraining. A lot of staff have had no other choice but to look for work in other areas over the last 10 months. Can you maybe share with us some of the supports that are being looked at to both retain staff and to retrain staff who have been out of work now for, for many, many months? Absolutely. So, you know, as I mentioned in the presentation, people are the cornerstone of the tourism industry. And as you've seen that we've got a, right, a wide range of training and development programs, uh, the content of which will be sector specific. And we're focused really on those areas of helping businesses to survive. So there's programs there on leadership, on management, uh, on revenue management, on sales and marketing, and also on operational excellence. And all of these are targeted and on supporting businesses to upskill their teams, to have have them ready for the opportunities that will come in the future and also to help retain them in the industry. Uh, and we will also continue to work with the careers oversight group as well as other education providers to ensure that we continue to develop programs for the long-term development of the industry and also to ensure the long-term labour supply of the industry. Thank you Jenny. Paul Keeley, in, in your presentation, you shared with us how the urban areas have been really decimated and have been uh, disadvantaged even more than some of the rural areas who had some sort of a, a domestic summer last year. Maybe you can share with us again or reiterate some of the key points of, of what's going to be done to support the urban areas, in particular Dublin. Uh, thanks, Fiona. Um, yeah, look, just... Um Look, the reality and the, the encouraging thing, I suppose, first and foremost, is that the consumer still retains an interest in their key urban areas, as I say. So I think the the first issue we have to do is, is suppose, is move to try and reimagine our urban environments and give people a greater sense of reassurance. So I think the outdoor dining scheme and the urban animation schemes will be, uh, I suppose, an early move to try and improve uh, the public realm in our key destinations. The second area, I think, is just to link back to um, Niall, uh, who obviously talked about dialing up Dublin within the campaign. But suffice to say, you know, our key urban areas throughout the campaign will be key areas of focus. Um, the third broad area, uh, I referenced at the outset, uh, the Destination Recovery Task Forces. And we are working uh, in every key urban location with local authorities, local industry, to make sure that we're making whatever changes need to be made from a, from a product perspective. It might be around pivoting to a domestic marketplace or pivoting from hens and stags to the family market or whatever the case may be. So we have a, a range of initiatives underway there at local task force level, again, just trying to make the best of what each urban location has to offer. And probably last but not least, business tourism is fundamentally about the key urban centres. And we have a short term focus on getting business on the books for future years. Uh, we talked about generating leads of 200 million uh, for future years and converting leads of 100 million in the current year. Uh, we're talking about working uh, through the gala dinner venue scheme etc to try and future proof those key urban locations uh, you know tackling a key gap in the Ireland portfolio going forward so a, a broad suite of measures uh, making sure that as I say we, we try and reboot the key urban centres. And obviously that would be coupled with the ongoing supports for rural areas as well. Yeah, Actually absolutely. Paul I know we're we're getting close here now to, to time and I'm conscious of time, but we heard from our industry Vox Pops the importance of digital adaptability this year and how many businesses adapted their online presence. We heard from Richie O'Hara, we heard from Neil O'Shea. What further supports will be on offer to help businesses adapt online and digitally to take advantage of any business opportunities? Yeah, so look, if we just go, maybe just go back to the start of the presentation, I suppose a, a big word of thanks first and foremost to the Minister and to our own parent department. We have gotten uh, both capital monies and current monies to, to move ahead this year in relation to uh, supporting industry to step change uh, its performance in the digital territory. Uh, we are currently mapping about 1,350 businesses, uh, really trying to get a sense of their digital maturity because one size won't fit all. So we're anticipating working with businesses first and foremost to actually make their experiences bookable online. We see ourselves working with businesses to build their websites and build better websites. We see ourselves working to uh, get online bookability in place, connected distribution in place, and we see ourselves supporting people with their digital marketing effort. So what we really want to do is increase the overall digital footprint uh, of the industry. Uh, and as I say, in the short term, the real focus this year is into attractions and activity providers. But 
rolling out uh, over the course of a three-year programme to support more and more businesses. Thank you, Paul. Okay? Paul Kelly, I see you'd like to come in there as well. Yeah, I suppose. Well, it's it's just in terms of uh, bef before we close, as we're as we're as we're running short on time. I just wanted to take the opportunity on, on behalf of everyone in Fulch, Ireland, to say a massive thank you to everyone for their time for logging in this morning. The the numbers of over five thousand uh, people in industry uh, joining us is 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 phenomenal. So thank you very much for for your time and your support. Uh, and uh, and just to you know, in terms of to to, to reiterate. You know our commitment to working with you uh, through what's going to be, you know, undeniably another very tough year uh, for the tourism industry, and hopefully, you know, that we can we can start to see the seeds of recovery before the year is out. Um, but uh, but just to say, you know, in terms of the that I think following this, you will get. I know we won't get a chance to get through all of the questions uh, that have that have been raised this morning, but uh, you will get uh, information and contact points. Uh, everyone on, on the uh, conference this morning will get information and contact points that they can follow up with if any of the questions that have been, that that we haven't been able to get to in, in the time that we have. So just wanted to say on, on behalf of everyone at Fulcher, a massive thank you for, for joining us this morning. Thank you, Paul. I would like to thank all our panellists and our presenters. I'd like to thank Ruth, Paul Kelly, Paul Keeley and Jenny for the panel discussion we've just had. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to get to all the questions, but I think we covered the majority of the topics that have been coming in. But again, as was mentioned, we will be issuing an events support guide following on from today's session by email later in the week. And that will contain all the contacts for your local Falsha Ireland teams, also the key topics that were discussed today. And today's proceedings have been recorded and that will also be made available to you. Just a quick reminder as well of the date for the business continuity webinar is February 9th and more details will be out on that on our website from tomorrow. So just to say thank you all for tuning in this morning. 5,000 industry practitioners coming together to hear. Again, the networking will have to wait till next year. I'm not sure how we'll accommodate 5,000 of you. It could be an outdoor event. But just to say thank you for your time this morning. We know it's a challenging year. We hope that we will be able to help you along the way and to look forward to collaborating with you and working with you as soon as the restrictions are eased, the vaccination programmes are rolled out and we can do what we do best, welcome visitors and give them a wonderful experience. Gurumila Mahagav Galair.